Two classic ingredients that push NFL players towards beef are one, sharing a division, and two, playing positions that demand interaction. For Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan, that's two big checks towards one big beef. In a lot of ways, this feud simultaneously made complete sense and came as a total surprise. So how exactly did this unravel into maybe the most memorable fight in NFL history? Andre Johnson always seemed like a long shot to emphatically beef with anyone. Since his college days, Johnson embraced the mindset of letting his play do the talking. 2003's third overall pick stepped into a Texans franchise still in its infancy. Despite spending his early years with some frustrating quarterback play, Johnson quickly entered elite status. Becoming Houston's first real homegrown talent, Andre had every reason to embrace the mindset of a diva wide receiver, but to borrow his own words, he's a humble guy, not the sort who's looking to steal the spotlight. For our sake, that means it would require someone special to draw some real emotion out of Andre Johnson. And in the world of beef, Cortland Finnegan's pretty special. The Titans corner sprinted up Tennessee's depth chart in part due to his aggressive style of play. Being feisty, tough, whatever you want to call it, it helped Finnegan make up for his undersized frame when battling bigger receivers. He paired physical play with trash talk to try and knock guys off their game, an approach that even Finnegan admitted helped make up for what he lacked. It also pretty quickly earned him a reputation. In 2009, Finnegan's peers voted him the NFL's sixth dirtiest player, a ranking that let the corner aspire to greater things. Any shit Finnegan talked, though, got backed up by his play. From seventh round pick to pro bowler in three years, Cortland settled into the league by unsettling those he defended. He appreciated the physicality of the game. When asked how he wanted his NFL career to end, Finnegan offered this unique response. Simply put, Finnegan played by the beat of his own drum. And he banged that drum right next to your head until you couldn't take it anymore. From the outside looking in, Johnson and Finnegan's first three seasons sharing the field showed no sign of anything beyond your standard division rivalry. Tennessee had a stranglehold on the series, but struggled to prevent Andre from doing his thing. This shows why timing matters so much with beef. Johnson torched the entire Titans secondary, not any one person in particular. While the receiver moved all over the place to uncover the best matchup, Finnegan primarily stuck to one side of the field. So, hypothetically speaking, if Finnegan went into his bag of tricks while facing Johnson on one play, the pair might go a while before lining up against each other again, thus giving everyone a chance to cool off and not let anything build up. Again, that's all hypothetical. I mean, Finnegan had nothing but nice things to say about Johnson ahead of their first 2009 matchup. Basically, if you play him honest, surely you'll win here or there, right? Well, through the first three quarters, Honesty didn't work for Tennessee's defense. In need of the actual best medicine, Finnegan MD arrived and allowed me to continue this wordplay by giving Johnson a physical instead of playing the ball. Although the referees picked up the flag for an uncatchable pass, Johnson let Finnegan have it. The pair came face to face and you could see some exasperation in Johnson's head roll. An official helped usher them back to the line, just in time for Johnson to really stamp his message with the most vicious finger point I've ever seen. And with that non-consensual piggyback ride, our foundation was set. After a Texans punt and a Titans fumble, our duo quickly found themselves opposite each other once again. Houston ran the ball to Johnson's side and he returned Finnegan's physicality. Andre locked him up and couldn't care less that the play died behind them. You can just catch Johnson hurling Finnegan down onto the Texan sideline. And the next thing the camera saw, they'd been swallowed up in a sea of AFC South hate. It's impossible to find Finnegan or Johnson in this mess until the Titan got pulled out, minus his helmet. Once Finnegan emerged, it became easier to spot his counterpart based on where the corner tried going. After the refs restored order, they flagged Johnson for unnecessary roughness, which was offset by the Titans' Jason Jones, who allegedly threw a punch and got the boot. From there, cooler heads prevailed. Houston ended up with the win, and everyone focused on one thing ahead of their next showdown. Johnson deflected when asked about the shouting match. Although, I'd love to see just how mischievous this grin was. 
He did admit how he felt about Finnegan's antics, but made it clear that he didn't think too much of it. It was just funny, possibly more bark than bite. But hey, that's Finnegan. Johnson knew it, the league knew it, Andre just wasn't going to let it affect him. Finnegan's response? Bullshit. He knew he'd gotten under Johnson's skin and planned to keep it up. This had some wrestling promotion vibes. One guy saying, my opponent is this and that, but I swear it doesn't bug me. The other guy not denying those things and taking offense at the idea that they're not working. I mean, they leaned perfectly into Johnson being the face and Finnegan being the heel. After those quotes made everyone giddy for more, their showdown earned top billing for round two of 2009. Which naturally meant neither player got the better of the other, and the teams as a whole played a much calmer game. But this moment genuinely seems like the key for this beef and the impact it would have. When everyone expected it, counted down the days to a rematch, and nothing happened, everyone kind of shut up about it. There was a full year before their next matchup, and to further douse any potential embers, the league even put Finnegan on notice during the 2010 season after he committed a finable offense in three straight weeks. Johnson responded to one question about his history with Finnegan, and couldn't have made it more clear. Some may argue that saying the same thing four different ways actually implies maybe he's not good, but no, he's good, which is great because the first matchup of 2010 gave us a new wrinkle. Finnegan followed Johnson around much more than in previous contests. In a game the Texans easily owned, Johnson again annoyed Tennessee's defense all day long. Or maybe not quite all day long. With the Texans up 17-0 in the fourth, they prepared to grind out the clock with Arian Foster. That presented us with a three-play stretch that would leave this beef seared into our brains. On first down, Johnson blocked Finnegan. Seemingly harmless, but right here, Finnegan might have had his hands up in Johnson's face based on how his helmet moved. But hey, no worse for wear. One snap later, as Andre approached, Finnegan really leaned into the block. Both players went high, and more shoving than blocking left Finnegan without a helmet. This time, Johnson clearly talked at Finnegan after the play. But remember, Johnson's canonically not a trash talker, so he's probably just recommending Lupe Tortilla as a good post-game meal in Houston. Or, as we quickly found out, maybe not. This is what it looks like when years of annoyance, of a calm man trying to stay cool, of a pest trying to piss off his opponent finally boils over. With both guys helmetless, Johnson towering over Finnegan as he delivered punches, this felt like nothing else. A brief scrum followed, which Johnson tried rushing back in for while Finnegan made his way off the field. Obviously, Johnson got tossed, and after the referees deliberated, Finnegan headed for the locker room too. Naturally, he made sure to show the Houston fans some love on the way out. Unsurprisingly, this fight stole the show. Texans players celebrated the win and clearly supported their teammates' response. Shit, even Houston's owner made goofs about it. Johnson immediately apologized, described the moment as not him and wished he could take it back, but Andre knew he'd have to live with what happened and what would follow. Johnson described his side of things, how it escalated and he warned Finnegan to back off before something happened. His QB, Matt Schaub, expanded on that. He said that not only was that a long time coming, but Johnson even gave the official a heads up before the play that things were heading in that direction. Also worth noting, Schaub said players around the league were texting thank yous after the beatdown. Maybe the biggest shock came when the NFL suspended no one. They hit each player with a $25,000 fine. A penalty that, according to the Chronicle's Jerome Solomon, Johnson's peers would have happily covered on his behalf. Once the punishment came out, Finnegan spoke up. He felt like Johnson took it way too far, and Finnegan hoped he set a good example by showing self-control. His coach Jeff Fisher backed him up on that, quite emphatically even. But Finnegan's biggest point came from a feeling of being mislabeled. He didn't retaliate. He didn't see himself as dirty. He just played hard fast, definitely not a fighter. That said, if forced to fight, Finnegan felt pretty good about his chances. He did regret how he left the field, but hey, no one's perfect. Finnegan illustrates the tricky thing about perceptions in the NFL. 
there isn't much of a spectrum in terms of how we see players. Yes, his aggressiveness pissed off some guys, but he did what he needed to do to help his team and stick around in a league where it's hard to earn a spot. While the dirty label got thrown around by others, Finnegan probably viewed himself as something closer to chaotic good. Johnson really seemed to understand Finnegan, and ultimately he always had, but it's one thing to recognize an opponent's tactics during the week, and another to stay in control during the actual game. However, with a rematch just three weeks later, both players admitted there'd be no more. They certainly weren't friends, they just had their fill. Despite Andre vs. Cortland serving as the main selling point, anyone with high hopes left disappointed. After 60 minutes and zero fireworks, Finnegan continued to show restraint, even returned to complimenting Johnson. Although we'd seen this beef hibernate and reemerge once already, this time was different. First, the beef no longer had willing participants. Sure, Finnegan vowed to never change, but Johnson, the self-anointed cool guy, regretted losing it once and made it clear he wanted no more of this. Second, had he or Finnegan wished to keep going, the NFL had already called each of them to essentially say no more shit. And finally, the opportunities just weren't there. They only played each other once more. That made it easier for Johnson to put his head down and focus on a Hall of Fame worthy career. On the rare occasion that he did talk about it, Johnson continued to express regret, but seemed like he felt justified based on the circumstances. As for Finnegan, he left the division, but could never really leave the fight behind. It stuck to the corner a bit more than it did to Johnson. Articles about Finnegan would reference the fight and then mention him being the Titans of Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee in 2010 and 11. Granted, Finnegan himself didn't dodge the topic. Shit, when he first retired in 2015, his official statement threw shade at Johnson. Around that time, he even admitted his biggest career wish was for another fight with Andre. Maybe a back alley brawl to really decide it. But it feels safe to say that's out of the cards. Each guy played their part. Finnegan poked the bear until the bear responded, and the response was loud enough that everyone calmed down. And although it might have been short-lived in the grand scheme of things, it gave us one of the most iconic moments in beef history. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this beef, then there's a good shot you'll appreciate reliving OBJ's run-in with Josh Norman. If not, we've got plenty of other options, so make sure you subscribe and we'll see you soon.